In this week's news, Targ Heuer unveils the connected watch, Samsung has a new design language, and Telcom is in talks to acquire Cell C. All this and more on this week's episode of Bandwidth Blog on Air. This is episode 17. Welcome to Bandwidth Blog on Air, the weekly podcast of bandwidthblog.com. In news we've been waiting for for quite some time, one of the world's leading luxury watchmakers have revealed that they are making a smartwatch. Can you tell us more about it, Brian? Well, if you listen really, really closely, you can hear both the tears of my heart and of my wallet. (laughs) Tag Heuer has officially unveiled what they've called the Connected Watch, which is the luxury brand's very first Android Wear-based smartwatch. Now, the connected watch looks more or less like your typical mechanical watch that you expect Tag Heuer to produce, except it comes fully loaded with uh, Android Wear functionality, and it's the first Android Wear device to come sporting an Intel Atom uh, processor, which I think is something quite special to look forward to in these Android Wear devices. Uh, It comes with built-in Bluetooth, Wi-Fi, one gigabyte of RAM, and four gigabytes of storage, and that processor clocks in at 1.6 gigahertz with a a dual-core processor. Now, now, Brian, how is this different to uh, other Android Wear smartwatches, other than, I assume, the price? Um, does it have a screen like other ones do, um, or does it keep the mechanical uh, uh, the mechanical pointers? What can we expect? Uh, well, what, there's two things which is pretty nice, I think, about, this, uh, about the connected watch as a package, is that the front screen uh, comes in sapphire glass, so that's going to be hell of a scratch resistant, which I think, if you're going to put down that much money on a, on a luxury uh, smartwatch, you definitely want, and Secondly, um, Tag Heuer were very open during their event um, last night on the uh, 9th of November um, that obviously at some point the Android Wear that will run on this device will become obsolete. So they're going to allow customers at um, at whenever they choose to be able to convert their Android Wear smartwatch, this connected watch, into a mechanical watch. So this definitely is a product that will have some staying power. Um, and I think it'll be interesting to see where it goes and whether people do eventually end up taking that option. And then, of course, the big question is how much will it hit us in the pocket? Oh, it's 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 a tidy sum. It's 1500 US dollars, um, which that being said, although that's a hell of a number for us in South Africa, um, I, that's actually not what I was anticipating. I was anticipating something closer, let's say maybe to the $10,000 um, Apple Watch edition. That's where I was expecting Tag Heuer to go with this. So I'm actually quite surprised, pleasantly surprised really with that at that price, um, though I still think it's, it's so expensive that it's going to be un- unaffordable for the vast majority of us. I think we'll just have to look on forlornly and, and watch people wear this beautiful device because Tag Heuer really have done a nice job designing this. And funnily enough, we've also had news in the last week of another company that is trying to make your run-of-the-mill luxury watch a smart connected device as well. The The company is called Kronos and uh, the product that they're launching is also called the Kronos. And it's basically a small disc that fits on the underside of any watch and it'll bring the core smartwatch function- functionality without making you decide on a platform. So the way it, it, it does this is, um, is with a small a disc that's only three millimeters thick um, and is 33 millimeters in diameter, which means that it'll most likely fit on um, on almost any watch that you might uh, own or might be wearing. It also brings the benefits of being able to switch from the one watch to the other without you know skipping a beat in terms of your smartwatch func- functionality. Um, it, it will use Bluetooth 4.0 to connect to any Android or, uh, or iOS device. It's completely waterproof um, and it's basically tasked with feeding you uh, notifications. So <clears throat> it'll be it'll just be a buzz on your arm, for example, when you get a message uh, or an email. And it will also be an activity tracker so you can use it for the same functionality as you would you know, some of the more cheaper ones that's think, out on the I market. Think the, I think Kronos has really come up with an interesting product here because I can recall not too long ago now saying to a good friend of mine, you know, I'm, I'm not necessarily sold on the idea of a flashy smartwatch, but if you gave me a really nice mechanical watch with maybe, let's say, a little LED that would just blink every time I had a notification on my phone or maybe a WhatsApp or email, I'd really appreciate that. So I think this is something really novel and interesting and i'd actually really be interested to, to test this out in one of my own watches yeah and it's an and it's only a 99 dollar um, accessory so 
well, not that money would be an issue if you've got a luxury smartwatch, but um, even if you've got a cheap watch, um, you know, it's a it's an option to to turn your watch into a, into a smartwatch because obviously not a lot of um, people that aren't tech junkies really want these modern smartwatches that um, the battery will die within the day and they have to go charge it and then they can't tell the time, for example. I mean, I can imagine that is that is a bit of a frustration for most people. And um, they've also said the size of this disc is so small that it'll uh, fit on roughly 80% of any watch you'll find today. I think that's an impressive claim. And I just want to touch on price there for a second because there is another gadget which we haven't spoken about yet which to, I think, everyone's surprise really bucked the price trend in terms of smartwatches today. That of all manufacturers is actually coming from Xiaomi in China, who today announced the 15 US dollar MyBand 1S. Now, the Xiaomi MyBand 1S is your run of the mill wearable, um, but it's really that price factor, which I think is going to be attractive to a whole lot of people who haven't been able to get in on the fitness tracker uh, market just yet. Now, the bad news for all of us, unfortunately, is that this is only available in China and it doesn't seem like Xiaomi have any plans to bring this um, to the international market. But I really hope after seeing the viral reaction this thing has kicked up that Xiaomi might consider exporting this to other countries and hopefully South Africa when they arrive here later this year. Uh, now, Tienis, this is something we had a brief talk about on Twitter earlier today, um, and I know it's something that's bugged you. It has definitely bugged me from Samsung's history, but Samsung now for better or for worse, have a consistent design language. Um, So Samsung's forthcoming phones now are based off of the design that we've already seen on the Galaxy S6 and to a lesser extent the S6 Edge. Um, And now the the firm's uh, lower end devices are starting to take on that design language. Now that's, I think, a good move because uh, these phones will start to look a lot more attractive. The bad part of that is I really doubt we're going to be able to tell any of them apart. What are your thoughts on that? This really frustrates me a lot, um, and I've spoken about this before. I mean, when I was writing, uh, when I was writing up the the article, I mean, I'd never have a big intro to a, a news piece that's not very significant, but. For me, it was significant just because of the looks of the device. Um, and, and, you know, I just bemoan the fact that I haven't been excited about or really excited about a new Samsung phone probably in years, in, in two or three years. And, and the, biggest, the biggest reason is back then it was because they were making shitty, cheap, plastic kind of uh, devices, which I didn't like. And then when they brought the S6, um, or actually even before the S6, when they brought out the Note 4, um, and then the Galaxy A line, which we're talking about here, it was a new, you know, sleek design uh, with a metal rim, um, nice chamfered edges, and I, I think it just felt great in the hand. It still had a rubbery, plasticky back, but but you know, baby steps. And then the Galaxy S6 came with a glass on both sides, which not a lot of people, you know, uh, people are quite divisive on that issue. But, um, you know, it was a really nice design, really sturdy flagship. And I guess that's what Samsung is trying to go for, is trying to take that um, uh, that look and feel and, and apply to its whole range. And while it may work, on the other hand, you know, if if you can't tell Samsung devices uh, apart, why would anyone buy a flagship device if they can buy a cheaper one? That'll perform pretty well as well. And, you know, you can tell people you've got a Galaxy S6 because nobody's going to know. Uh, I find it I find it really strange and, and frustrating. And, and as a tech reviewer, um, quite sad because, I mean, we love getting our hands on different kinds of devices that do different things and look different and feel different. And now we're not going to be able to do that with Samsung. Um, what are your thoughts, Brian? Well, I think, you know, uh, when I look at Samsung's devices nowadays, I really think Apple and I look at the iPhone 6S and you can see the similarities in the train of thought that Samsung are going for. And uh, generally, I like the new design, but in the same breath, I don't want to see it everywhere. Um, And I agree with you. I mean, to have a low-end device that looks nearly identical or at least very similar to the flagship device doesn't give Samsung a lot to hedge their bets on in the upper market because, I mean, when you buy a flagship device, it's usually for the distinctive factor of A, the performance, and B, the looks. Um, So I think going forward, Samsung is going to have a hard time with that. That being said, though, I think a paragon of of finding a good design language in in recent years has actually been LG. Um, I've reviewed the uh, LG G4 Beat recently, and I've got a very much 
and I've got my own review of the G4 stylus coming up shortly. And what I think LG have done quite cleverly is that they've taken the better parts of their design language, so subtle curves, now the leather back, um, and they've brought that to different devices in different uh, ways. As you'll see in my forthcoming G4 stylus review, I talk about how LG have taken, sorry, taken some elements of the G4 into the G4 stylus, but they've left it with enough of its own unique characteristics to feel like an individual product. And I think that's important. Um, you know, we, we are, the market's so flooded with smartphones. I think it's important that each one stand out and each one have an identity that doesn't just go into software. It should expand out into the external physical appearance of the device. Bringing news a little closer to home, we have news that Telcom may want to acquire Cell C. Now, Brian, we've heard these rumors before, but now it's been confirmed. Uh, it seems that a lot of people are divided on whether this is a good or bad thing. Uh, give us some details on, on, on what they're proposing and, and what do you think about it? Well, um, we don't exactly have concrete details on what sort of transaction we're talking about, but Telcom have 100% declared their interest in acquiring um, all the shares of Cell C. So that's not uh, Telcom wanting to buy a majority stake, that's Telcom really wanting to own the entirety of Cell C. And again, we don't exactly know what Telcom's acute plans for Cell C are. We don't know if they want to continue to operate Cell C as uh, its own business, which I think is unlikely, or they want to sort of roll it into Telcom Mobile, which I think will be the, the more likely decision of the two. Um, we do. I do know at present that um, the figure being thrown around at the moment is apparently twenty billion, which I think you know just a bit of pocket change, um, which I think is is <laughs> is is good news for for Cell C. Um, um, and so far yet we haven't heard any conclusive news about whether this uh, whether this acquisition is going to go through. But I think it will be likely. The only thing that we're really waiting on to see is that um, whether Ogre Telecom, which has the controlling stake in Celsius at seventy five percent, will be willing to sell everything in one go. Um, I mean, we posted a, a Twitter poll yesterday to sort of see what um, our readers were thinking. And like you say, it, this is a very, very controversial um, news issue here because not everyone's thrilled with the idea of telecom taking over Cell C as a service provider. As a Cell C user, user myself, I'm not entirely sold on the issue. Um, I'd prefer to remain under the Cell C banner myself rather than have to deal, let's imagine, with a whole new um, administration or price packages um, so on and so forth. But then again, I've not really had a negative experience with Telcom Mobile. Uh, what are your thoughts, Tennis? Cell C, for some reason, have, you know, they came onto the market with a kind of a new image, trying to be this new company and trying to shake things up with the two the two big, uh, big players, MTN and Vodacom. But I'm not sure why they haven't been able to really crack the market. I mean, they say they've got 22 million subscribers. Um, which makes sense, but when you compare it to something like MTN or Vodacom, I mean, Vodacom has more subscribers, um, in parentheses, than there are people in South Africa. So, so they've got more connected numbers on their net network than there are people in, in the country. Now, that's obviously then, you know, they, they are still very far behind. Um, and, and it seems like all their marketing uh, hasn't really helped because they, uh, I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, a couple of years ago, um, they had all these new uh, marketing campaigns trying to get on board with the, you know, the young and hip image. Don't think that really worked. And then, and then recently, uh, the, you know, that they would even buy out your contract, your two-year contract, for up to ten thousand rand. Now that's a big, big amount of money, and you would think that some people would would jump at the chance. Do you think that Celsi has failed or do you think that Telcom wants to buy them out because they are successful and they might actually help Telcom um, in their mobile business because obviously Telcom Mobile is definitely struggling? That's that's a really good question, actually. Um, I'm not sure I can give you a conclusive answer, but I can at least give you my thoughts on the matter. And that is, I don't think Celsi are failing at all, um, but neither do I think they're succeeding. And I think that's exactly why Telcom are in the position they're in that they can buy them out. Um, because Celsius are still at that middle ground where they really haven't 
broken as much as the market as they want to, but they still have sizable weight under their belt. So it actually makes it a natural purchase, a natural purchase for Telcom to get in there and acquire Celsi and then transform the network from there, depending whatever they want to do with it. Um, I think had we seen a huge success of Celsi, I don't think Telcom would even be able to think about affording um, that network at the moment. Um, and if Celsi were absolutely dismally failing, I don't think Telcom would be at all interested. So I think it's because Celsi is sort of in this no man's land at the moment that it's so vulnerable. Um, and I'd be really interested to see worse Telcom to fold Celsi into Telcom Mobile, whether the the brand perception, at least, of Telcom Mobile would change. Um, I mean, it, I mean, users would would sort of really, without even knowing it, be using Telcom Mobile services. Uh, and and I'd be interested to see whether the standard would improve and whether sort of customer perception would improve. I think we're going to have to wait and see at the end of the day. Review Spotlight, where we discuss our thoughts on the latest review devices to reach our hands. Now, in this week's review spotlight, we have something special from HTC in that, Tiernis, you have the Desire 66 on your desk. What can you tell us about it? Yes, I mean, I've been looking forward to getting this device for quite some time. It was actually released about six months ago, actually almost seven months ago. So it has been a while, but it has come to the country. And um, I think it's a great offering at this price point from HTC. They are having a real, real issue um, penetrating the market in any way shape or form they're losing money hand over fist so they really need to do something to you know to really uh, uh, penetrate the market in a meaningful way now the HTC Desire 626 is a mid-range device um, it has a 5 inch 720p um, it has a 5 inch 720p screen so it's not the top of the line it's got a 13 megapixel camera 2 gigabytes of RAM and a 2000 milliamp hour battery now, the, the the market that it's going for is obviously the more affordable one um, and to compete with the likes of Samsung and LG in that space. I've used it for, uh, I've only used it for about a day now, um, so um, I don't know all the ins and outs yet, but what, what I can tell you and what we've said so many times about HTC devices in the past is what I love about it is the skin. Uh, HTC Sense on Android is just great. It's probably, in my opinion, the best Android skin that there is on the market today. I was actually just about to, to ask you about that because um, HTC's Desire handset hasn't always been met with, with the best reception. Uh, and I was wondering, how does the weight of that skin sort of feel on, on the Desire 66? Because it, it doesn't quite have the same high-end specs that the, the One A9 would. Yes, I mean, uh, HTC Sense is a relatively heavy skin. Um, it's... You know, it, it does add a lot, a lot of functionality um, on top of Android. Um, it's got an interesting icon pack. Um, you can also put in different themes and so on. Um, but it is, it is at the end of the day, um, a really good performing skin. And, and I think that's the, that's the 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 important part here. I mean, even though it is quite a heavy skin, it performs really well. Unlike something like TouchWiz on Samsung, which is probably still the heaviest skin you can find um, and the performance really slows down if you've had the device for 6 to 12 months um, and the LG for example also has quite a heavy skin um, but but it performs it performs really well as well um, so the HTC they've got some really interesting ideas in Sense the new version of Sense um, performs great and I'm really liking the, the features obviously I haven't been able to set up everything perfectly but the way it's working at the moment I probably don't need to do much to to set it up to the way I like it I think that's really impressive and, and how well does that um, translate to the outside features of the phone such as the, the feel in hand what's that like well, it's a plastic device. Um, it, it is polycarbonate plastic um, with a rubberized uh, rim. So, I mean, it's not going to be the most premium device at this price point. So I wasn't expecting miracles here. But what I can say is it's really grippy because of that, um, because of that rubberized side. It's not going to slip out of your hand any time. Um, and, and it's not really a fingerprint magnet, which I was expecting. So, so the rear doesn't pick up fingerprints as easily as I thought it would. Well, I think that's great stuff, and I'm really looking forward to seeing how that is because for a long time now I've been interested in mid-range HTC devices, and this sounds, from what you've described, particularly compelling. So we'll have to meet up for a beer at some point so I can have a good look at it. That's all for this episode of Bandwidth Blog on Air. Thank you very much.